Hey, Ike Chico here from Splice and Coast, and uh, I have a quick Adobe CS6 uh, speed grade um, CS6 tip for you guys. So um, here we go. It's about um, creating power windows, or in this case, mask, as it is known in the speed grade environment. Now, if you uh, are familiar with other uh, high-end um, color grading systems like um, DaVinci Resolve or Quantel Pablo, Makuda Film Master, or Baselight, the way you create masks will be so different from the way you create masks or power windows here in Speed Grid, and I'm going to show you. To do that, I'm going to go here and um, create a new primary layer. And I'm going to go in my mask tab. And um, as you can see, I already have something there, so it was showing. All right. Uh, okay. Now, let me just draw your attention down here to this section. Okay. As you can see, um, Adobe Speed Grade CS6 ships with um, a couple presets. And uh, basically, I mean, it looks like it's three, but I always say it's two because um, this is basically a subsection of this with a, with a feathering attached to it, all right? And I'll show you guys in a minute. You click here, okay, you get a circle power window. When you click on the square, you get a square power window. And when you click here, you get a vignette, okay? And as you can see, it's uh, the same thing as a circle power window, but it has some um, feathering, all right? And you could click the empty to just get rid of that. Okay, um, give me a second. I have some, I already um, worked on the shot here. So as you can see, I have some keyframes here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, delete everything. Okay, all right, so let's um, just start afresh. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and create um, a circle uh, mask or power window real quick. Okay, and you guys will see that it has a widget. Now this is how speed grid works, okay, and other um, editing, um, sorry, in other color grading systems, it is not widgets, okay? You could basically um, use controls, but in speed grid, you use widgets, all right? So I'm going to show you how these widgets work. First of all is the little circle with a plus in it. This is basically to move your mask around um, the interface, okay? So I could just um, click and hold the plus section, and I could just basically move... Um, my mask okay I could even move it out of the screen if I want to all right and that is what that is for okay um, coming to this section here we have a little square here okay um, this is to affect the size of your mask okay what you do is you click and hold it and you could drag it up to make your uh, mask bigger or you could drag it down to make it smaller so this is to affect the size, all right? The section that is outside of it, this little, this little portion here, that is to affect the feathering of your mask. So you create your mask, you want to feather it out. How do I do that? You reach out here, okay? And it's basically the same thing. Same thing all around on the widget is basically click, hold, drag, okay? So click, hold, and just drag it up. It feathers it out, drag it down, all right? So that is what this is for. Okay, now we see an arrow facing up, all right? Now this is to affect the vertical portion of your mask. So if you do the same technique by click, dragging, and holding, and pulling up, see what just happens? Okay, and you could bring it down. So this is to affect the vertical portion of the mask, all right? So your guess is as right as mine. If this is for the vertical, then obviously this section is for what? The horizontal. Okay, so I could create the same um, vignette. That is um, this here. All right. Now, the last thing now here is rotation. And that is the semicircle here on the outside of the, um, the widget. Okay, so it's the same technique. Click, hold, drag, and just move it. And you could rotate your mask. So this is how you do a rotation on the mask. All right. Okay. Now, 
you could just use at any time click empty to just get rid of that now if you do not want to use the presets you could have a free hand meaning you could draw your own form of mask there is a big caveat here though speed grade cs6 or speed grade in general doesn't ship or doesn't i mean maybe in a, in a newer version as, as adobe is developing it but currently there is no way to do a spline freehand drawing okay everything here is linear all right if you want a spline mask you will have to first draw the linear then after that you select a point and you basically turn it into a spline but there is really no way that you draw a spline and let me show you guys you click here okay with a with a plus button to add points okay so as, as you add in points is basically you drawing um your your mask all right let's just say i want to do a quick road on this on uh, rotoscoping on his face okay as you can see i'm trying my best to try to curve around but it's not gonna let that happen okay because they are all linear so i just basically have to draw my points okay across his face like that and now if i need a linear okay and every time after every time after you're done putting up um creating your points here please try and um select um the cursor button here so that that is off so you could have the benefit of your widgets to move them around all right so now that i have my points now i could go in and create my spline if i want so if i want a spline for this point i could just go ahead and click and select that and i'll come to where it says node type there are different types here i could just use this the bezier curve all right so i get my bezier handles here okay then i could just um tweak my um my roto okay i could do the same if i want to select all the points i hold down shift and select each point to make them active all right then i could go ahead and select my bezier curve all right and now i have the spline okay now I could go ahead and fine tune it the way I want. So this is the only thing that is is with speed grid at the moment. Okay, you can just um do this Bezier curve drawing uh, from the get go. You will have to use their own built in um linear drawing. Then once that is done, you could be able to go in there and create your own. Another thing I'll let you guys also know: at any point, if you affect a point on your mask, let's just say. I selected this point, all right, and I made uh, a correction to it, okay? Now, when I wanna go back and work on this footage, if I do not deselect this point, what happens is whatever I do from here on is gonna affect just this point, okay? So if, in case I say, okay, let me add some feathering to my shape. When I begin to feather it, I'll see what just happens. It's just gonna feather just that point because speed grade still sees that this is selected, so it's assuming that that is where you want to affect all right and that is not something you might want to do maybe it is maybe you might not want to feather the whole thing just some points go ahead and do that but it is always advisable that every time you work on a point click outside of the mask to deselect everything then now when you go ahead and you make the changes it's going to affect all the points all right um Another thing that I want you guys to know is um, just like every other high-end color grading environment, you could be able to um, apply grays to both the inside or the outside of a mask, all right? In speed grade, you would have to get out of the mask session, okay? Because over here under mask, the only thing you could basically do is draw your mask and um, um, track your mask, okay? And um, let me talk about, before I, I get out and show you guys, uh, let me talk about um, the tracking real quick. It has um, some really powerful um, um, tracking um, here in speed grade. Basically, it uses keyframes, okay? So what um, when you click on track object, okay, what happens is it's going to analyze frame by frame, okay, and create keyframes according to the motion of um, whatever you're tracking, okay? So um, when I click track, track object I want you guys to take a look here you're gonna see um, little um, diamond shape objects like this being created and that is being keyframes being created you see that so it creates different keyframes for every frame 
as it analyzes and goes along. Okay, and this is very good. Why? Because at any point, if the keyframe goes out, let's just say you you keyframing something automatically and um, in the scene, somebody walks across what you keep framing and it goes off. Okay, what you could do is you could just basically let me just stop this. You could stop the um 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 the the um the operation. Okay, and you could go to that keyframe, select it and delete it. All right, then you could create your own manual keyframe, move your widget, and it's gonna just continue from there. So it is a very great, great, great feature. All right, right. So we just wanna um, wrap this up real quick. Okay, I'm just going to show you guys how to um, use this um, to do some creative things. Okay, so to affect or to use your mask for grading, you go into your look. Okay, this is where you create your looks. All right, and um, when you do that, you realize that the widget is gone. Do not panic. That is just how it works. It's still there, but you just can't see it. All right, when you come to where it says mask and alpha, all right, um, right now, Nothing is nothing is going on. It's just a mask. All right to create or to use the mask for something You're gonna have to use one of these here. The first one here is to let you Use the mask to affect everything that is inside of the mask. So if I select here it turns blue Okay, and now the mask is ready to use so if I drag on my highlights everything and make it blue see what just happens it changes everything that is inside of my mask. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Okay, the next one is this button here. When I click that, it's gonna apply my gray to everything that is outside of my mask. So when I put the same blue now, it goes on the outside of my mask. All right, um, one last thing to tell you, let you guys know, mask um, here in Speed Grid are like every other in every system. Okay, you could use it in conjunction with secondaries. Okay, so example, let's say in my scene here, I have some um, uh, green objects behind, and I want to um, use a secondary and pull a key and reduce or increase the green there, but I don't want to affect the little greens here in his shirt and in the dark areas here. How do I do that? You could use your secondaries and use a mask to just separate that and do that. All right, so um, thank you guys very much.